So we've talked about hypothesis tests, we've talked about confidence intervals, we've talked about significance levels and alphas and p-values and all those kind of things. And uh, several times you have asked, how do we know what alpha to put? If the problem doesn't give us an alpha, what alpha, do, alpha level do I use? And I said, 5% is a good number, but what is it that it really means to talk about a significance level or an alpha level? And so uh, today's lesson is going to kind of explore that because it involves figuring out the possible mistakes and the severity of those mistakes. And I think the easiest way to learn this is to essentially strip it of all the mathematics. So most of what we're going to do today has no mathematics or x-bars or mu's or things like that. It's just going to be problems and words like this one. The null hypothesis is it's not going to rain today. The alternative is it's going to rain today. And I think here in Texas, that's the way we usually wake up in the morning. We wake up with the idea the original belief, it's not going to rain today until we're persuaded by the evidence that maybe it will rain today. So we hear thunder, we watch Bob French, we see uh, dark clouds outside, maybe it's actually raining or something, so it's, it's pretty conclusive. But this is how we usually start. If we lived in Seattle, we might usually start with, it's going to rain today because that's what usually happens. So this idea of which one should be the null and which one should be the alternative hypotheses can can differ depending on the situation you're in, right? And so there's essentially four things uh, that could happen as a result of uh, dealing with this. First thing is we think it is going to rain, and it does rain. That's a correct decision, right? So I'll put that up here. We think it's going to rain, and it does rain. That's a correct decision. What's another correct decision I could make? We think it's not going to rain, and it doesn't. So there's the other correct decisions. Let me write that on here. We think it's not going to rain, and it doesn't. Now, we can separate these decisions from the consequences, and I want to separate those right now. And at the end, I'll come back and we'll talk about the consequences of the decisions that we make. Now, there's two mistakes that we can make. And one of them is we think it is going to rain. But it doesn't. That's a mistake. Agreed? The other mistake is we think it is not going to rain. But it does. And those two mistakes have different consequences um, than one another. When we talk about errors... In this chapter, we, we talk about two different types of error. One's called a type 1 error, and one's called a type 2 error, cleverly enough. A type 1 error is when you reject HO when it's true. Sear that onto your brain. A type 1 error is to reject HO when it's true. Because if you can remember that that's a type 1 error, the other error must be a type 2 error, right? So don't worry about memorizing what both of them are. Just remember that a type 1 error is when you reject HO when it's true. So which error here is a type 1 error? In which case is HO true? The first one there. That one is a type 1 error. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Surely there's a way for me to type in here. And therefore, for all you rocket scientists out there, that one's a type 2 error.
A type 1 error, again, is rejecting HO when it's true. Now, with each of these four cases, and I'm not going to type these up, but with each of these four cases, let's go through the consequences of them. On the first one, the correct decision, you think it's going to rain, and it does. So what's the, what's the logical consequence? It rains, but what else? What's the consequence for you? You woke up this morning, you think it's not going to rain, but you hear thunder, and so you decide, hey, it might rain today. And in fact, it ends up that it does rain today. So what happened in your life? It rained and probably you didn't get wet because you knew it was going to rain, right? So you probably took the umbrella to school or to wherever you're going. So the correct decision here, we think it's going to rain and it does, but you're prepared for that. So you've got your umbrella, you've got your slicker on, you wore your galoshes to school, whatever the case is. All right, the second correct decision, you think it's not going to rain and it doesn't. So what are the consequences there? We don't look like a tool walking around with your slicker on and it's not raining. Or you don't carry your umbrella unnecessarily. All right, now the interesting ones are the type 1 and type 2 errors. So what are the consequences of a type 1 error? You have an umbrella for no reason. You walk around all day with your umbrella, but you could have left it at home. And what are the consequences of a type 2 error? You get wet. You thought it wasn't going to rain, so you're ill-prepared and you get wet. The idea of setting up HO and HA and setting up your alpha level is based upon the, the severity of the consequences. So we might view these consequences differently. If you really care about getting wet, you're going to carry an umbrella more often than not. Meaning, there's going to be times that you carry your umbrella unnecessarily. But you're all right with that because you really hate to get wet. On the other hand, if you're a type of person who doesn't mind getting wet at all, then you probably don't worry about taking your rain stuff. Because, ah, yeah, I'm going to get wet sometimes, but that's okay. If you're getting ready to go on um, a camping trip, and it might rain, you probably want to take extra stuff just to be safe, right? But for me personally, if I'm coming to school, I don't worry about it. Because it's a pain in the neck to carry an extra raincoat around all day. So if it rains, I just run. The probability the probability of a type 1 error is alpha. This is how it connects to what we've been doing. The probability of a type 1 error is alpha. Now, how does that make sense? So give me a, allow me just for a second to look like it might actually be math, but it's not going to be, okay? Here's the truth. I'm going to say I have a 5% rejection region, and it's one-sided. So this is 5%, okay? If I get an answer out here, what am I going to do? Reject HO. Okay, and an answer in here, I'm going to fail to reject. So in other words, if my X bar falls in here somewhere, then I fail to reject HO. I keep believing it. On the other hand, if my X bar falls out here somewhere, then I reject HO. Does this make sense? Now, how often do I get an answer out here when this original mu is true? Alpha, 5% of the time. 5% of the time, when this is true, I'll get an answer out here. But if this is true, and I get an answer out here, what am I doing? Rejecting HO, but I just told you HO was true, so I've committed a type 1 error. You see that? Hey, you don't like type 1 errors? You think those things are really bad? What do you do? Scoot that green bar out to the right. You're less likely to make a type 1 error. Cool? Now think about it logically. Let's go back to my first example. Exactly, Kyle. If you're, if you're less likely to make a type 1 error, you're more likely to make a type 2 error. Now some of you guys will make this connection mathematically quickly, but I think we can all make it with this logic pretty easily. You hate to make a type 1 error. 
You hate to think that it's going to rain when it doesn't because you hate to carry around your raincoat and your umbrella unnecessarily. So what do you do? You don't carry around your raincoat and umbrella. But if you don't carry it around very often, you're more likely to get wet because you don't prepare for that. Now, there's not a, a real simple connection mathematically between alpha and beta. There is a connection. There are ways to figure it out mathematically, but it's not, it's not real simple or real cut and dry. However, the probability of a type 2 error is young AP students, not 1 minus alpha, beta. Yeah. Beta. The probability of a type 2 error is beta. And again, beta is not something simple like 1 minus alpha. It's something com confusing, and that's what I'll go through Thursday and Friday, and it would be a great idea to bring your map pencils because I do stuff in about eight different colors. You don't have to, but it'll make life a little easier. So if you're writing these things in symbols, then alpha is the one that looks like a fish, and beta is the one that looks like a fancy bee. So again, if you don't want to make an alpha, you don't want to make a type 1 error, so you want that probability or you want that alpha level to be really small, fine, make it small. But recognize that in doing so, you're more likely to commit a type 2 error. You're increasing the likelihood of beta. Let me give you another example. Consider the shy guy trying to get a date for the next dance. He's shy. So regardless of whether you actually wrote this down or not, I can tell you the shy guy has done this in his head. His null hypothesis is she doesn't want to go to the dance with him. So that's his original belief. His alternative hypothesis, of which he thinks there's not much of a chance, but it's the girl will say yes and go to the dance with him. So let's go through again the ideas of what we have. So one correct decision. Get this out of the way. And you'll notice as I'm doing this that I'm separating the decision from the consequence. So the what's a correct decision? Yeah, and, and I'll tweak that just a little bit. So it's not the girl will say no and she does. It's I think the girl will say no and she does. Right? So I think the girl will say no and she does say no. No. Okay, that's a correct decision. What are the consequences of that decision? The, my decision is I think she's going to say no. So what are the consequences of that? I don't ask her, but thankfully she was going to say no anyway, so I don't get rejected, right? So that's a that's a correct decision. I avoided the embarrassment of asking her because she was going to decline anyway. So what what does a guy do to help himself in this case? He gets his friend to find out first, right? So he doesn't actually have to ask her. He gets his friend to ask her friend. Do you think she'll say yes? No, I don't think she's going to say yes. Fine, I'm going to decide she'll say no, and I never bother to ask her. But I'm okay with that because it would have been really embarrassing. There, there might be no, well, there's consequences. Because what are the consequences here? Because I didn't ask her out. What are the consequences? Well, I, I saved myself the embarrassment, but I also didn't get a date to the dance. So, I mean, there's there's consequences, but there are consequences that are correct decisions. And so I won't even say they're good. Is it good that you didn't get a date and go to the dance? I don't know. I suppose it's good that I wasn't embarrassed, but also that's part of growing up. So the, the whether it's good or bad, that comes with how much you're willing to tolerate certain mistakes. Some people, they're okay with being embarrassed. They'll ask every girl that walks down the hall, you want to go to the dance with me until one says yes. Good enough. Other guys, you're going to ask one, she says no, you're done. All right, what's another correct decision? I think she'll say yes, and she does say yes. I probably should. Since my typing is suspect. So that's another correct decision. 
I think she's going to say yes. So I finally screwed up my courage enough to go ask her. And thankfully, she says yes. And so we get to go to the dance and have a fun time. And she actually was okay with that because she said yes to me. Type 1 error. A type 1 error, again, is when you reject HO and it's true. So I'm going to reject HO, but it's true. In this case, true meaning she's going to say no, but I've rejected that idea. So what's the decision? I think she's going to say yes, but she says no. And you guys chuckle, but it's not funny. <laughs> That's right. It's funny when it's another person. No, it's a friend of mine. <laughs> All right. I think she's going to say yes, but she's going to say no. So what are the consequences? The consequences are I take styrofoam cups and I put it all along the fence and it says, how about prom? And then she says, no thanks in solo cups or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, you feel stupid. So, you know, most guys would say I'm, I'm not really into the type 1 error. So I want to make sure that I minimize the chance of a type 1 error. I get my friend to find out first. Um, I do things so that I'm not going to take this chance, meaning I'm more likely to make a type 2 error, where I think she's going to say no, and I wrote here she would have said yes because that's part of the consequence. What's the consequence? You didn't ask her. So she's sitting at home wishing she was at the dance with you, and you're sitting at home moping because she wouldn't have said yes to you, and that's not a good thing. So the, the, the errors are bad things. And you might even say that this first correct decision is a bad thing. Or not, depending on who you are or who he is, maybe. Perhaps, yeah. And, and sometimes these better decisions are real obvious. Sometimes we will all agree, and sometimes we've all kind of decided to agree. So we've decided as a society in, in our criminal justice system that the null hypothesis is the suspect is innocent. And we've also decided, so if the suspect is innocent, let me write this one up. I don't have this one up. A different society may have a different null hypothesis. A different time, we've had a different null hypothesis. During World War II, when we rounded up all of the, the Asians and put them in camps, we had the null hypothesis that if you were, if you were foreign, especially Japanese, you were, you were guilty of treason, right? So that was kind of the null hypothesis that we went with. We, we now pretty much generally believe the suspect is innocent. There's a few differences. War on terror, we might have a slightly different approach. Um, but we'll go with this one right now. The null hypothesis, the suspect is innocent. HA, the suspect is, I'll write it like this, not innocent. And so for this one, let's just talk about the, the two error types. A type 1 error. Somebody tell me, what is a type 1 error here? Good. You think he is not innocent, but he really is. Good. And what are the consequences of that? You put an innocent person in jail. And, and likely screwed up his life, at least part of his life. A type 2 error, then, is the other thing. You think he is innocent, but he is not. And what are the consequences there? 
a guilty person walks around, so you might have screwed up somebody else's life because you let the guilty guy go free. Now, which one have we decided in society is worse? The first one. We've decided that putting an innocent person in jail is a really bad thing. So we make the prosecutor convince you. We make him present significant evidence. If you're not persuaded, you let him go free, right? And sometimes, as a result, we, we let guilty people walk. Now, sure, sometimes we still make a type 1 error, even though we think it's worse. We still screw up that way sometimes. Because this methodology is not foolproof. The methodology we use in criminal justice is not foolproof. The methodology we use with normal curves and sampling distributions and all that is not foolproof. But I think you can see that if I minimize type 1 errors, it's going to mean I make type 2 errors more often. Another example, you may have heard of a fellow named uh, Blaise Pascal. He did a bunch of stuff in math. Uh, he was a philosopher and Pascal's Triangle, you, you perhaps have heard of that in other classes. He also had a thing that he called Pascal's Wager. And his null hypothesis was there is a God. And his alternative hypothesis is there is no God. And so he used this as sort of a, an apologetic for trying to convince people that uh, they're, well, I'll let you see. Turn it to green again. I'll tell you what, let's do the correct decisions first on this. So what's a correct decision? Good. You think there is a God and there is. Okay, so what are the, what are the consequences there? You were right. Presumably, maybe you decide to follow said God or honor him or whatever. Okay? All right, what's another correct decision? Whoop. What's the deal? You don't think there is a God, and in fact, there is. So the consequences there. You don't waste your time going to church or, or whatever. All right, so what's a type 1 error? Good. You reject HO when it's true. I always refer back to this. It's obviously really easy to get them switched, in which case you've got them wrong. So if you'll just remember, a type 1 error is rejecting HO when it's true. A type 1 error is rejecting HO when it's true. A type 1 error is rejecting that there's a God when there is a God. So, rejecting that there is a God when there is a God. All right, what are the consequences there? <laughs> you suffer the consequences of said religion's God not being happy that you didn't believe, right? Right. So whatever that whatever that true God says, you chose not to believe and you have to pay the price. And then of course the type two error is the other error. And and some people prefer to kind of turn around what I said about rejecting HO when it's true and figure that out. I just prefer to say it's the other error. If you can remember type one is rejecting HO when it's true, the other mistake is a type two error. So in this case, I believe there is a God but there is not and what are the consequences there yeah you're disappointed you 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 die and that's it <laughs> you know um, so in Pascal's opinion as he said to himself, self, if I minimize a type 1 error, I maximize or I increase a type 2 and vice versa. He said to himself, self, which error do I really want to avoid? He decided to avoid a type 1 error and use that as his apologetic. Now, how, do you, how can you guarantee avoidance of a type 1 error? 
in this in this specific example. If this type one error is really horrid to you, or in any other problem, if a type one error is really a bad gig, how do you avoid it? Yeah, if if you never reject HO, if you stick with HO, you'll never make a type one error. Does this make sense? Because the type one error is rejecting HO. Well, if you don't reject HO, you're not making a type one error. So if a type one error is a really, really bad thing, so Pascal said rejecting God, the God who is is a really bad thing, the way you avoid that is you don't reject God. Back, back to this example. How do I avoid a type one error? You always believe he's innocent. You never put anybody in jail. In this one, how do you avoid a type 1 error? You always believe she'll say no, so you never ask anybody. How do you, how do you avoid a type 1 error? You believe it's not going to rain. You just wake up and you think it's not going to rain. You don't even worry about an umbrella. Now... Likewise, the same way you just avoided type 1 errors, you could avoid type 2 errors all the time by always rejecting HO. Okay? And so um, you kind of have to decide. I think as we went through those, those four examples of totally avoiding a type 1 error, you probably saw at least one of them where totally avoiding a type 1 error might not be desirable. Sometimes you should be persuaded that... It's going to rain. Don't you think? Sometimes you, you hope to be persuaded, um, you know, that she'll say yes. So sometimes it's real cut and dry on which one's bad and which one's okay. Sometimes a type whatever error is not such a big deal at all. You're not sure you put your name on your paper when you turn it back in. So what do you do? You double check. What if you, what if you did put your name on your paper? Who cares? You double check for no reason, no big deal. So sometimes those those error types are clear cut about which one's better and which one's worse. Sometimes it's up to you. You think such and such is way worse than the other thing. But know that if you decrease your likelihood for a type one error, what are you doing to a type two error? If you decrease the likelihood for type one, what's the likelihood of type two going to do? It's going to go up. It's going to go up. And it's not a perfect equation like alpha is 1 minus beta or anything like that. But if one of them goes down, the other one is going up. And that's essentially the idea of type 1 and type 2 errors, how they relate to alpha and beta. The idea of this significance level with alpha like we did with, with our hypothesis test the other day. And why it is that if this is true and I get an answer out here, it's still it, it's a mistake because I'm going to end up rejecting HO. Getting an answer out here doesn't mean HO is not right. Getting an answer out here m means, golly, it's kind of weird that I'd get an answer like this if HO was right. So I'll probably quit believing HO. But sometimes even when HO is true, you get strange answers. And that's the, that's the whole idea of type 1 and type 2 errors.